The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. All this work on guitars has caused me to become a hard rockin' rock star. I drive my Maserati at 185, I go to parties until they sometimes can't find the door, and of course, I like to break expensive musical instruments and then bill it to my tour's budget. <laughs> Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. Okay, I'm back. Rusty is here too. And we're going to start putting together the auto strumming guitar. So we're going to rig it up and show you what we're thinking. These holes don't necessarily line. So this is a rack and pinion. The rack is the long part with the, all the teeth in it. The pinion is the gear that moves it. So this advances it forward and then there's a slope portion here which raises the pick. Then when you go back, it lowers the pick causing music. Now the reason we did it this way was because this downward pressure here pushes against this and this and the body of the gu guitar can sustain that. If we just had an arm on a servo, this downward pressure would eventually strip the gears, especially if they're plastic. And these are metal gear servos, but still it's better to um, use the body of the guitar to receive the force. Sure. And which is weird is like when we put this together before, this wasn't working, but now it is. See how it lifts it up a little bit there? It's a good height. <laughs> all right. And it's all resting on this beautiful uh, plate that Ben was laser cutting this morning. Oh yeah, and it has like two or three coats of clear on it, so it will obviously stand up to a thousand years of playing. I think it's as many coats as the top of this guitar. Uh, no, but we ran out of clear, so okay. <laughs> that's what it's going to be. And then the switches are going to be here, so um, we should probably get those drilled out too. All right. We're going to drill some holes in the top of the guitar to uh, be able to place these switches and the other potentiometers. So Rusty, I was thinking, we have all these individual holes, which is great and all, it's gonna be really hard to put together because we'll have to put this down, install all the parts, and then wire it through here. And everything has to be lined up just perfectly to get this, to uh, be able to set the servos through, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, what are you thinking? Thinking, see how I already started cutting a big hole here? Mm -hmm. What if we just pretty much cut this entire thing out, like, I think it's a great idea, we have this, uh, Handy tool right here. Yeah, I mean we just make some more smoke. And then what we could what would happen is then all the parts would mount to this plate. Now the edges we would leave, so we'd add some screw holes here. So we'd build everything on the plate and then put it in place and then tap the screws. Sounds good. We don't want to affect the integrity of this guitar too much, but if we mount it on there it should work pretty well. Right, and then you suggested adding some strips under the bottom to yeah. increase the strength. Yeah, I think, you know, it's one of those things like if we, the time it takes to do that, the time we'll save will be much greater than the time we'd spend trying to wire it up strictly with all these holes. Sounds good. Let's do it! Yay! Who needs cross supports? Well, we probably do. Alright, so we're working on getting all of the components installed in this beautiful wooden plate that's going to be installed into the guitar. And this will be handy because we can just put our circuit board here. So everything is one, one piece. It's all wired. We attach the jack coming from the pedal into it. Then we plop it in, then all we have to do is add the mechanical components. I even added this here, <laughs> so we can easily program it while it's built. Or after it's built. Extension programming. Yeah, it's awesome. We should be fine. 
RS232 chairs. All right, well, keep stuff in that part rusty, and I will get other things ready. So I put all the electronics in the back of this plate, and I was able to wire it easily. So I can just kind of stick it in the guitar like this. The ease in which you can build something is a very important factor when figuring out how to make your projects. For instance, to program it, I actually made this extension header here so I can program it while it's installed in the case, and then once it works, I kind of just yank this out. I can also install our little alligator guy here before I actually put this in. That way I can get at the screws and bolt in the alligator properly. All right, I have this working pretty good. This gear moves this back and forth, which lifts the strings. And then when you have it set to uh, manual, this switch here determines which way it's strung. So like, how, see how I'm strumming up? And then once I strum up, it'll lift it. I'll go back down so it'll miss the strings, and then it'll drop it. And these knobs here adjust where the extremity of the stroke is. It needs a little, the adjusters need some adjusting. This one goes a little too far to the right and not far enough to the left. This one is kind of has the opposite problem. Uh, but a bigger problem I see that I want to fix first, because that's just a software glitch, are these pillow blocks. This whole thing moves a little too much, and these can pop out, which is not good, because then it could get stuck. So I'm going to redo these two pillow blocks before I continue much further. Tech time out! putting a lot of adjustment knobs in this project, and each one of those knobs has a potentiometer under it. So a potentiometer is usually represented like this in a schematic. It's like a resistor, but there's an arrow going into it. This arrow represents the thing that moves, the wiper or the tap or the center. So physically, you might see it like this. So the two ends of it, if you measure that resistance, you'll get 10K or 100K or whatever your potentiometer value is. The value of this, as compared to ground, will give you a different variable voltage depending on where it is. So if it's closer to here, it'll be five volts. If it's closer to here, you'll be at ground. How we're using it in our project is with the ADC, the analog digital converter. This tap right here goes to the ADC, and if it's zero or five volts or any range in between, it'll assign it a digital number, an analog to digital converter. Um, we're using an ADC that has a 10-bit resolution, so that's 1,023 different positions. Well, 1,024, including zero. So potentiometers are great for you know making fine-tuning adjustments, especially in a project like this. And we take their analog value, make it digital, and then use it in our code. Get dev kits fast. Element 14, your dev kit HQ. Here are the parts. We have this, which moves the strummer back and forth. This goes forward and back to lift the strummer off the strings or let it hit the strings. Then we have this. This tells us if we only want to do up strums or down strums. And this one, the strumming is manual, so it's controlled by the foot pedal if you're strumming or not. Then these are pots that adjust how far it goes, like how far it goes this way and how far it goes that way. And underneath, we have all these nice disconnects. This wire is coming from this connector, which goes to the pedal. So it's easy to take apart and modify as needed. Okay, let's test this out. But well, first, put it in the center, and then we'll hit manual mode. And this is where we set the height of the string, or the pick. Let's put it just where it's gonna hit, okay? And we're gonna auto mode. Now auto mode, we can select if you wanna strum going to the right or to the left. So let's have it strum to the right. So it'll, only, it'll go strum, lift, strum, lift. Down strokes. Yeah, is that what it's called? Great. Huh. Looks like we're missing this top string here by a small bit. Okay, why do you think that is? Well, it seems to be that this uh, this nut that holds the strings at their desired height mm -hmm. is lower on this side than this side, plus the thickness of the string is more. So maybe if we were able to pull this side down more, we could get that. How about if we just, let me hold my finger here and we'll just kind of bias this down. Try it again. All right. Okay. 
Okay, now we're hitting all three strings and three strings. And it'll probably be even better once there's more strings on it. It'll be more even. Mm -hmm. So let's um, punch three holes in here. That way there's options, but I think I'll screw in the center here. Will probably be good. That way, this will have like kind of an uneven tension, so it rides with the wave of the nut. All right. Sounds good. We're getting close. I'm building a secondary pedal for the strum control. If it's in manual mode, basically this will move up and down here, and it will hit a switch. So I CNC these parts, and I'm going to assemble them. All right, here we go, foot pedal. Uh, I've got some big fat springs in there and a snap action switch, so it should be pretty tough. And it plugs into the other foot pedal, so it's all modular. So basically, um, if you want to do it manually, if you want to control when the pick hits, it's like... So we made a dual pedal system, so there's as many options as possible in playing. So let's go through this, the different options. There's a manual mode, Basically, manual mode means um, this pedal will move the pick back and forth no matter what. Go ahead. So if we depress this. So that controls if the pick is up or down. Uh, okay, so yeah, so then. I don't know why you want to play like that. Also, when you're, uh, you can push the lever down and pretty much override the pick at any given time, no matter what mode you're in. So if you're also down like this, could you put it in the middle? And also you can put the pick down and use this knob to adjust the point at where the pick hits the strings. Okay. Now there's also an automatic mode, so you can do just down strums or up strums. So let's go to this mode. All right, now this pedal. Take it back. Yep, go ahead. Oh, I think I adjusted it too high. Oh wait, we're not in auto mode, sorry. Nope. Okay, I'll switch to auto mode. So the mechanism watches his strums and moves up and down. So now he's just going that way. Now if I switch it to this, now it only strums that way. And the pedal can be used to override it at any time. The idea is to put all the options on these levers and buttons and switches rather than in the code. So it's like, program it and forget it. Then we can remove this cable. So I think these should be a decent amount of options. Yeah, you can also adjust how far the, the arm actually travels on both ends of the, the strum. Cool. So yeah. Maybe if he starts putting this on 12 string, you can make it strum a wider pattern. Neat. All right, well, let's remove the programming cable and Rusty will give us a demonstration since he can play guitar, I guess. Okay, we got everything together, so now it's time to play some tunes with my new band. So there you have it. Someone emailed us and they had a problem and we solved it with an electromechanical solution. So it was fun to do. So this is just the first of many new projects you'll see on Ben Heck Show Season 4. Yeah! 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 Oh, that's right! Yeah! Yeah! And that's why ticket sales are so expensive. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com.